everybody and happy witchy Wednesday evening. Courtney here from Seaside Shadows and I'm so overjoyed to start this new segment with you. I've been excited for days and I'm really hoping to be able to share some really fun magic with you over the coming weeks. So I wanted to take a moment and introduce you to our setting and what we're going to be doing today. So we are in Moodis, Connecticut, in my home by the beautiful element of fire in this fire pit. And we have here this beautiful cast iron cauldron. Today, what we're going to be doing with this cauldron is making black salt. It's the perfect thing to start us off on our weekly series as we endeavor on spells and potions and the like, and with cooking as well, because it helps not just prevent rust on things like cast iron when we go through this black salt creating process, but it also banishes negative energy. And it makes sure that only things of goodness and good nature and things that are here to help us will be allowed to be made in this cauldron over this fire. Fire is very transformative, so it can take something at its base and make it something good. And we'll be talking about that today and how that adds to the magic of the cauldron. So I want to first start by telling you all that we're not going in with just a cauldron that hasn't already been cleansed. And if you go a little bit further back on our feed, you'll see that we just did a cleansing down at the Moodis River. It's flowing by our house, flowing pretty rapidly. We had a nor'easter a couple days ago, and if you're up here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But fresh flowing water, water from streams, rivers, anything of that nature, the ocean, any water is very cleansing. And it's the best thing you can do to make sure that anything you'll be working with in regards to magic or spells is cleansed. So we brought the cauldron down to the Moodis River, immersed it into the water so that it was fully cleansed for today, where we will now be working on banishing any negative energies and creating black salt. So to start our segment today with the black salt, we're going to be utilizing two ingredients, olive oil and sea salt. So I have them here and ready, and we're going to be doing what seems a little bit intense with rubbing this oil and salt, both inside and outside of the cauldron. So we're going to do this today, and it's not just continuing the cleansing, but it's again, it's creating that black salt to break up negative energy. So we have this lovely segment here. We're gonna put some of the olive oil in here. I don't believe there's too much because I have endless amounts of sea salt. If you have just regular sea salt at home, don't hesitate to use that for any cleansing that you may require because regular sea salt is also extremely helpful for purification in regards to all things magic. And we have our sea salt here and we're just gonna give it a good rub all the way around all the way around the inside all the way around the outside in a moment as well which seems like a lot but we're gonna keep going because hey there's never enough black salt in this world is there and this is going to be cooking over the cauldron don't worry we won't make you watch the whole time for three hours you heard that three but we'll make sure to post the pictures of the finished product when all of it is said and done. Look at it, it's cleansing the whole inside of the pot and we're gonna do the outside of the pot as well. And it's looking lovely if you ask me. I'm feeling that clean energy. And you can do this at home. You probably don't need quite as much olive oil or salt if you do this at home, especially if you're just seasoning your regular cast iron. You're probably like, my goodness. But we want to make enough black salt for everything that's going on in the world and so that we can send some your way as well. So we've got this all rubbed in all over the cast iron and all over the cauldron. I'm like, Courtney, you put your hands all over this. Um, earthy crunchy witch here and honestly our hands probably in this pandemic are more cleansed than they have ever been right so we're going to put this right over the fire looks lovely right and we're going to start making our black salt now while that is being conjured up so magically excuse me while i pick up all my mess I want to talk with you about the cauldron in general i wanted to get it started so 
I was very pleased to find when I started getting involved in spiritual and witchy work that the cauldron has Celtic origins. <laughs> Ooh, that's perfect for me, you may say, in my red hat and my cloak. And it comes from a Celtic god. And I want to introduce you a bit to this Celtic god. He is what we would consider oh, the Celtic Odin. And I know you're all familiar with Odin and his ravens and the Vikings and the things of that nature. He's a father figure, he's a king, he is, you know, the be all end all, and he's a head warrior. But he also is associated with magic and druid magic. And when we do things like working with a cauldron, it's especially important. Uh, Dagda, his name, possessed a magic cauldron. His was overflowing with food. And if we look back at centuries of cast iron and cauldrons, we know that they were the best way to cook for your family, stews, soups, and the like. And making sure you provide for your family is of course magical, but it's also a great way to produce herbs and tinctures and things of that nature. So Dacta always had a magic cauldron. He always had a staff that he walked with. I imagine him very wizard-like. And he had a cloak. So it said you must have a cloak and a cauldron to have the magic of Dagda, and here we are, cloak and cauldron, to ensure that we're starting our magic off the right way and the Irish way. Uh, he was thought to be a good god, and I want you to know that, or the All-Father. He was of great knowledge and fertility. So when we channel his energy for the things we're doing, we're channeling very good things. But there's something else I like. Yes, he's a wonderful male figure, but we often think of witches and cauldrons and the like as female figures. And that is not a strange thing in the past. In a lot of witch traditions and Norse traditions, it would be the goddesses who would utilize the cauldron. And they would associate the cauldron less with the fire that the male witches might associate it with, which would bring all of this heat and would have to integrate with other people in order to be destroyed. Fire just brings so much. But the female energy would bring with it water, water that would go into it, water that we would cleanse it with. And that would also be the ultimate transformation, water being the only thing that could extinguish a powerful flame. And being sacred to the goddess with that water, it has allowed it to be also a female sign of empowerment. So male and female, spiritual and witchy people alike have used the cauldron over the centuries to provide, to create healing, and to create magic. Now, today we're making black salt. And you may wonder, where do I get black salt? I want to break negative energy. I don't want it coming in my house, living in my house. If you've been home during this pandemic and you find yourself quarreling more with other people or you feel like you're getting out of sorts or you're getting cranky or you want to break up that negative energy, and that's something that you can use black salt for, making sure it's in your home and sprinkled at your doorways. And that's what we're creating today. And we're creating it to set the tone as we get together each and every week. Next week, uh, it's important that this black salt has it pure because we will be doing a spell for healing, which I think will ultimately be important uh, to our process as well. And before we tune out today, we'll give you a little sneak peek of the black salt as it's cooking and of the ingredients that we'll be bringing back for healing. And I'll also give you a little teaser that in a few weeks, we're going to learn to scry together as well uh, with some full moon water. So as we get closer to the full moon, that's something to keep in mind. Looking to make your own full moon water, the cauldron's another great opportunity to do so. So we're going to let this black salt heat up over the flames. We're going to let Dagda bring his powerful Celtic energy to this process and to our work together. We're going to channel the female ancestors that came before us, the providers, the healers, the nurturers, and let them bring their energy to the work that we do. A lot of people associate witchcraft with negative negativity. I want you to associate it with centuries of healing and centuries of family and centuries of ritual and centuries of belief. And that's what we're going to encourage today. And that is what the use of herbs and magic has always been organically for. I loved chatting with you today. I know it's a brief intro, and as we get more involved, the segments could be longer. 
Enjoy your witchy Wednesday. Listen to some witchy music. I will post links when black salt is available for purchase from this very session. We'll continue making it and I'll make sure that we can have that available to you. If you want to send tips on any Witchy Wednesday, you will see the info in the description box. You are welcome to. The sessions are free and we want you to enjoy which magic is for everyone. Stay safe, stay happy, and remember there's magic all around us and healing and we will find that together. And I will leave you as Marty takes a little walk around the cauldron and gives you a sneak peek at the ingredients that we're getting ready for next week.